All right, folks, coming up on Roland Martin on the filter for Friday, February 8th, 2019. Another woman comes forward claiming uh, she was raped by Virginia Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax when they were students at Duke University. The lawyer says there is contemporary corroboration. Fairfax is fired back saying he, this is absolutely unsubstantiated and he will not resign. We'll break it down with our panel. Meanwhile, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam is digging in and is likely to survive the racist blackface photos in his medical school yearbook. Y'all got to hear about the reading assignment his staff has given him. Remember crazy girl Candace Owens, black sick, big time MAGA Trump supporter? Well, guess what, y'all? She was in England, and she actually said that, you know what? Hitler, his nationality was fine as long as it was in Germany. Okay, we're not playing y'all the video. I told y'all she is not the brightest bulb in a dark room. Trump may be gone in a few years, but his federal judges will be here for the next 20, 30, to 40 years. We'll tell you about Republicans ramming through nearly 50 of his judges in one day. We'll talk with a lawyer from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law about what's going on. Also, new details of the story of Crystal Mason, a black woman who went to prison for, for voting in Texas. Her attorney, Kim Cole, is here with a live update. Also, this morning on the Tom Jordan Morning Show, I participated in the interview with Senator Kamala Harris, who's running for president. We'll actually have for you the full interview there on the Tom Jordan Morning Show. And Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee uh, of Houston shows Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker, who's the boss at a congressional hearing today. Wait till we show you the video. Folks, it's time to bring the funk. I'm Roland Martin on the filter. Let's go. Folks, more drama in Virginia. Well, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax uh, took a major hit today uh, when a woman who went to college with him at Duke University, uh, she released a statement saying that she was raped by Fairfax when they were students at Duke, saying it took place in 2000. Now, in this particular statement here, we're going to read the actual statement. And so uh, this is what the statement actually says. Um... And first of all, the headline is Request for Resignation of Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax. They say, We serve as counsel for Meredith Watson, who was raped by Justin Fairfax in 2000 while they were both students at Duke University. Mr. Fairfax's attack was premeditated and aggressive. The two were friends but never dated or had any romantic relationship. Ms. Watson shared her account of the rape with friends in a series of emails and Facebook messages that are now in our possession. Additionally, we have statements from former classmates corroborating that Ms. Watson immediately told friends that Mr. Fairfax had raped her. Ms. Watson was upset to learn that Mr. Fairfax raped at least one other woman after he attacked her. The details of Ms. Watson's attack are similar to those described by, by Dr. Vanessa Tyson. At this time, Ms. Watson is reluctantly coming forward out of a strong sense of civic duty and her belief that those seeking or serving in public office should be of the highest character. She has no interest in becoming a media personality or reliving the trauma that has greatly affected her life. Similarly, she is not seeking any financial damages. On behalf of our client, we have, notifi we have notified Justin Fairfax through his attorneys that Ms. Watson hopes he will resign from public office. Now, this is the statement that Justin Fairfax released. I deny this latest unsubstantiated allegation. It is demonstrably false. I have never forced myself on anyone ever. I demand a full investigation into these unsubstantiated and false allegations. 
Such an investigation will confirm my account because I am telling the truth. I will clear my good name and I have nothing to hide. I have passed two full field background checks by the FBI and run for office in two highly contested elections with nothing like this being raised before. It is obvious that a vicious and coordinated smear campaign is being orchestrated against me. I will not resign. Right now, I want to bring up now our, our panelists here uh, joining us uh, to talk about this. Uh, first off, uh, we have uh, Malik Boyd, who is with us uh, out of Philadelphia. And we also, of course, have uh, Barbara Arnwine, Transforming Justice Coalition. So, folks, let's, let's ex examine this. Now, first of all, the initial complaint by Dr. Vanessa Tyson mm -hmm. says that uh, he forced her to have oral sex in 2004. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that took place over the weekend, okay, public on Monday. So now we have this statement here. Now, her lawyer, who was also the lawyer for uh, Gretchen Carlson when she sued Roger Ailes at right. Fox, they say that she told friends that it happened at the time. But are any of you surprised, though, that he, Justin, when he ran first as attorney general, mm -hmm. the lieutenant governor, often talked about being a Duke graduate. Right. And no one said anything about this. Just what are your thoughts about as you read this letter? Not only that, she she calling for his resignation, mm -hmm. but not for him to be charged, not for not suing financially, and then also, they say, she has no interest in becoming a media personality or reliving the trauma that has greatly affected her life. Well, you're going to have to. That's going to be a part of this if you accuse him of this and say he should resign. What what your thoughts? You want to go with that? Yes, well, first of all, I'm connected through to both of their alma maters. Right. Okay. Because Stritz College is where I went to undergraduate. Okay. And that's where Tyson is tenured. A professor, at. yes. And I also went to Duke <coughs> University for law school. Uh, so, you know, I have this, you know, real, you know, feeling. First of all, Tyson has nothing to gain. Because do let me be very clear, everybody, Scripps College is not going to be loving on her for this. Uh, this is not, the, that's not that kind of an environment. I went there, I can tell you it's mostly a white school. It is not going to be, you know, giving her pats on the back. So she's taking a risk mm -hmm. by coming out. There's no doubt that she will not be rewarded for this. I also think that the contempt, if it's proven, and it is substantiated that this, that she actually, the second lady actually at Duke had told people contemporaneously, then I think there's no other option for Justin Fairfax than to resign. I think black women have to stand up for other black women. And I think it's important for us to say that the entire rape culture of this society and within the African-American community has to end. So how do you, though, get to that point, though? Yeah. Because if, so it, in order to get to that point, mm -hmm. there has to be an investigation. Right. And there has to be the witnesses have to actually be named and have their statements read. I mean, you know, this is not one of those instances where you just sit back and say, oh, well, there's no proof. It's, you know, it's just he said, she said no. And we know from watching what happened with Kavanaugh mm -hmm. that more people will come for it. And, and we also... Because this is, sounds like a pattern. But, but here's the piece here. We also have here where she frames this as um, he raped her. Yes. Mm -hmm. It When Dr. Tyson's statement, they called it sexual assault because right. it was forced oral sex. Right. Now, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a prosecutor, mm -hmm. but I think when people hear rape, they hear that as differently than what Dr. Tyson described. Exactly. But the lawyers here say in their statement that um, that they were, oh, that details of Ms. Watkins' attack are similar to those described by Dr. Vanessa Tyson. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, first thing is, I think every man on this panel is vehemently against rape culture, all right? Mm -hmm. But it becomes dangerous when you throw rocks and hide your hands. And that's, in essence, what that statement was. He raped me, but I'm not going to even finish the conversation. I'm just going to leave this thing out here and let it stick. And this kind of political climate, to your point, we have to get to the bottom of it with the full investigation. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate the fact that Justin Fairfax 
did not attack her and said, listen, let's go as deep as we need to go on the investigation because I have no doubt that I'm innocent. But she has to come to the, to the table. She's now, got to tell the story. Now, again, so Barbara, you said that yes. witnesses are going to have to come forward yes. and names revealed. That's right. And so, uh, and then th th they said that she told friends and emails and Facebook messages and then they have statements saying that uh, that Watson immediately told friends that Mr. Fairfax had raped her. Right. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is those folks are going to have to come forward Absolutely are. and say this actually happened. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, but, but also mm -hmm. produce something that also corroborates it. Right. Well, I think right. that, you know, it's going to be very, very important for this to get fully aired because I don't think that we can have a situation where it's just his word against her word. I think it's very important against their word now. Mm -hmm. And there will be others. But her Most lawyers, likely. though, are not calling for an investigation. Right. Well, and that's, uh, and that's very, very interesting. And remember, you know, I, I mean, I think it's so hard for people to understand what it's like for a woman who has been sexually assaulted or right. raped. Mm -hmm. That they don't understand that you don't want the camera on you. You don't want to have to keep talking about what he did to you. Mm -hmm. That that's emotionally not only uh, you know harmful and hurtful, it's destabilizing to your entire existence as a woman. And I think that people don't understand that every time these lurid details are talked about, mm -hmm. about what he did to her, it... The first of all, what he, what he allegedly did. Right, allegedly. what he so, allegedly right. did, it just chips at you. But, like somebody taking a hammer to so, a building. But, but, but I can ask you this, flip it, though. Yeah. If, you, if you're Justin Fairfax. Right. And you say it flat out didn't happen. Right. Former, gov former, former Governor Terry McCullough has said he should resign. If you are your lawyer, mm -hmm. if you are the lawyer for Justin Fairfax, what is your response? Oh, of course. You know, if I'm his attorney, I'm saying you got to make them come forth with all the proof. I mean, that's what I'm saying to him. I'm also saying... But what you tell him to resign? I'm also saying to him, confidentially, on the QT, I'm saying, listen, if you did this, you know, let's, let's be straightforward right now. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in going down a long road right. of defending and how, you know, and all this, because all, all you're doing is destroying your entire career. It's already gone if it's true. But well, what if he so says you to you... To come out. What if he says to you, Bobby, if you're his attorney... He says, Barbara, this did not happen. Then you defend your uh, client. I mean, that's what you do as a lawyer. Would you, you tell him? No, but I'm asking you, though, mm -hmm. the cause for resignation. Yes. If you're his lawyer. Yes. And he's saying, Barbara, I did not do this. They're saying I should quit. Do you tell him, quit, we'll try to clear your name? Or do you say, no, you don't leave, we're going to fight? I would... But you got to remember, it's me, right? No, I'm asking you. As a woman. That's why I'm asking yeah, you. And I would tell him, listen, we're going to make them produce the evidence, uh, you know, and produce these witnesses. We're going to make them do that. We can do it in camera, meaning, you know, we can have it done secretively without it being in the public eye, or we can do it in public. But the bottom line is, you better be conscious that if this is substantiated, that you're now doubly you know, harmed. You're now doubly mm -hmm. eroded. Mm -hmm. And it's not in your best interest to go down this road. Malik. So, I, I agree with that, and I think it, that's mm -hmm. very important. Yes. However, and, and I'm not a lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. But the right to face my accuser. Mm -hmm. You have now accused me, and so in the court of law, now, bring it out. Show me the facts. And so, yes, there, there's this very delicate balance of someone having to relive such a traumatic Event. However, the the timing of it is quite interesting. But when the is there a the good fact, time? It, then there's never a good time. There's but never the, a good but time. But the timing and the facts that says, listen, this occurred, but I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story, and I don't want to relive it. In this space and time, I think it it is justice on both sides mm -hmm. for the story to come out. So I got to ask both of you. Yeah. We heard, okay, we heard Democrats. Mm -hmm. Especially women who were saying with Christy Bla with Christine Blasey Ford and Kavanaugh exactly. believe all women. You had Republicans who were saying due right. process. Right. When Congressman John Conyers was accused. Mm -hmm. Yes. You had folks who were saying, Oh, you gotta go. Al mm -hmm. Franklin. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not going there yet. Okay. 
You got to go. Right. Uh, Kanye's folks were like, wait a minute, hold up. Due process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the question is this. This is not, and again, I'm bringing up white men. I'm bringing up black men. Right. I'm bringing up anybody. Let's say a woman is accused of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And they have been. The question here is, Mm -hmm. can you have a due process conversation in a politically charged environment? Well, I think that you have to have an investigation. But, but, but what's the investigation? To, I think that the, you know, listen, what they had the option of doing in the Congress on Franklin and everybody else was they could have done a congressional investigation. Okay, so, so, okay, so let's do it with facts. Right? Let's do it with fair facts. He's a, he's a lieutenant governor of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the, Dr. Tyson said this took place in Boston, 2004. Mm-hmm. This woman, um, Meredith Watts said it took place in North Carolina in 2000. Mm -hmm. So if there's an investigation, who does it? Well, in this case, it would be the ethics committee or whatever the committee with grievance committee would be. In Virginia. In Virginia. Okay. It would absolutely be. So. And, and, and you got to also worry. I mean, he needs to worry because I don't know what the statute of limitations is on, uh, you know, rape. Mm -hmm. And by the way, rape is not necessarily in every state a requirement that there be what you call penetration. Right, right, precisely. And that it can be precisely what's been right. you know, alleged in the Tyson statement. So what you would need to do here is that you would have to have, you know, a complete investigation, but he better be worried that the state does not open its own investigation and its own, looking at its own possible charges. But here's indictment. the piece, though. Because they can do that. But here's a piece. He said, quote, right, I on. demand bring it on. a full investigation right. yep. into these ups, unsubstantiated and false allegations. Such an investigation will confirm my account because I'm telling the truth. Yeah. He's caught. He, he's he's calling. not dancing. Absolutely. He's saying, Absolutely. bring the investigation. Please. Absolutely. Please. And you got to remember, you know, Roland, I'm a lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. So I've had clients. You know, I'm not a criminal. And, yeah, you know that lo- that statement I, I've had was clients. vetted by lawyers. I have clients who have, I have, in fact, my first ever case, I was telling somebody about this the other day, was a case that involved a client who have been telling the same story, Roland, for at least seven years. Wow. We go to court, we've done depots, mm-hmm. interrogatories, we've had, you know, full discovery. We get into court and the judge says, you know, put your hand on the Bible, and she says, I can't. Wow. Okay? Wow. And I have told a lie. And all of us who were her lawyers almost fell on the ground. Mm-hmm. It was the most embarrassing situation ever so we've had people say oh take it to court we'll go all the way i'm gonna fight i mean so you never know all i'm saying is it's good that he's called for an investigation that's the right thing to do i think it's important that if he knows in his heart you know something different that he does the right thing Mm -hmm. uh if he knows that he's innocent he ought to fight but that's all the more reason for due process right because Precisely. due process is what brought out that flaw in the case, <laughs> right? right? So you get to the point of due process me. and you find out the flaw either way. However, he's calling for it vehemently. He right. needs to get it. And I, and I do think in this culture, because it's politically charged, mm-hmm. unfortunately, we have to do full investigation. Yes. You got to bring your story. You cannot throw rocks and hide hands. And we were mad at the Got Kavanaugh it. situation because they didn't do Absolutely. a full investigation. Absolutely. And I think that that would be a good thing for, to happen here. Let me real quick here. Let's talk about Ralph Northam. Uh, New uh, Civic uh, Survey of Virginia says that 60% uh, of the voters want Governor Ralph Northam to resign as a result of blackface photos. Just 24% of voters say he should stay. Now, for black folks, it's 64-27. Now, here's what's interesting out of all of this. Uh, go ahead and bring Derek in our panel. Uh, yeah, I don't know why y'all had him sitting over there. Bring him in. <laughs> now, here's what's interesting in this whole deal, okay? In Virginia, Northam is now basically saying, I'm not going to quit. And his staff is even giving him reading assignments. <laughs> y'all, so they've had him read Alex Haley's Roots. Oh, my yeah. God. They have him reading Ta-Nehisi's oh Coates' God. story in the Atlantic on the <laughs> argument for reparations. Uh, and they got him reading some other books. And so Northam basically is about to shift this whole issue of yeah, yeah. uh, making his... 
his governorship about race. Uh, so again, I got Malik, I got uh, Barbara, Derek Holly, host of Reaching America on Demand podcast. First, Derek, I want to get your thoughts on the Fairfax story first, and then we'll talk about this northern now focus on race stuff. Well, I'm from Virginia, grew up down there and all that stuff. So for me right now, it's just kind of crazy what's going on. And I think uh, with Justin Fairfax, I think the, the right thing for him to do is call for a full investigation. Bring it to the table. If you mm -hmm. accuse me of it, because I understand the lady now, she said her attorneys um, that she does not want to move forward. She wants to go back to her life mm -hmm. as it was. Well, no, in, in a statement, um, um, she says, she, quote, she has no interest in becoming a media personality or reliving the trauma that has greatly affected her life. Uh, similarly, she is not seeking any financial damages. Um, and so, yeah. I just don't understand how that could happen. And mm -hmm. so for her to come forward, and then say, I want to go back to my life as it was, right. that's, that's just not it's possible. It's never going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. So never. Um, I'm glad, because Roland, I was on that show when Justin came on that morning. He said he wanted to come on your show. After he won, after he won uh, Lieutenant Governor. And he said he wanted to come on your show first and do the interview. And I was on there, and I met him that day. And he just seemed like a stand-up dude, you know? And so I, I, I applaud Justin for for, you know, calling for this full investigation. So let's talk about this Northern, okay? Now all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm about to go read some black stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, get my black up. Yeah. Oh, come now, on. <laughs> it's no, disgusting. But, so, so the blackface thing um, is really important for a couple reasons. This happened not in the 60s. 1984. <laughs> he was 25 years old. This is the 80s, right? And so to all of the individuals, to all our, our folk that believe we made it and we're good, <laughs> We're not, right? And this is evidence of that. Um, and, and to those who, who are uh, our, our white counterparts who believe everything is settled, this is clear. It's not. Right? Barbara? The 80s is right. ridiculous at this point. Well, listen. I mean, he can read all he want to read. At home, after he's resigned, yeah, he really, needs to really resign really. right now. Stop dragging this on mm -hmm. stop attacking stop doing all the stuff you're doing Cause, cause in the case of playing. the case of fairfax he's accused of something right we got we photos know, we know now so you're trying to say that it wasn't me. but it was right me. It was and also you know. i want to say to the supreme court in the croson case where mm -hmm. you said that you know all this history of virginia being the heart of the confederacy was passed Sandra Day o'connor uh, o'connor and all the rest of them right think about it right think Derek. About i was just going to say you know, when I, my sisters and ne nieces and nephews all still live down in, Ty in, in Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. And so when I go home, for years I've said this, mm -hmm. it's like traveling back in time right. when you go to Virginia. <laughs> yes. And it's just this, this, this feeling that, that comes over you, man. You just, I mean, from everything from the state troopers laying up in the cuts when you're coming down, mm -hmm. from the police hiding in the woods mm -hmm. and everything, man, it's just crazy. Same as Alabama, South same, Carolina, same as Mississippi. Texas, yeah. you right. name it. Louisiana. I'm just saying, I mean, it's like, right. and, and yeah, you, when you black, you feel it. You feel it right. immediately. <laughs> you feel it. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all, uh, let's talk about getting an update on the story of Crystal Mason, mm. the black woman, oh, yeah. of course, who was sent to prison because she voted illegally. Now, what's crazy about this is that she went to prison for tax fraud. She got out. She said she voted. She did it. Oh, she, she could not vote. She said she didn't know. Her parole officer said she didn't know. They still threw her in jail for violating her parole. Then the Tarrant County DA tried to hit her up on an old sewage violation and charge her with that crime. Luckily, they have dropped that charge. Joining us right now is Kim Cole, Crystal Mason's attorney. All right, so Kim, what's the latest? What's going on with Crystal? Well, Roland, um, as you said, um, the we just got the Tarrant County District Attorney to drop Crystal's charges yesterday. And so um, now I it was just confirmed. I um, heard from the Bureau of Prisons this morning. As of this morning, they are resubmitting Crystal's um, application to be transferred to a residential reentry center, which is commonly known as a halfway house. Okay, so, all right, now that was on that federal charge. So she would go to a federal halfway house. But, yes. what's, the, she, but what's the deal, though, on that state charge? Which state charge? The original voting charge or the sewer charge? The state charge, the, 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 the voting charge. The voting charge is currently under appeal, and we are awaiting a ruling on that. So if she go, so if she goes to, if she's able to get to this residential, uh, this halfway house, how long, how much, how long will she spend time there? 
Um, so she will probably have about three months left by the time that that process goes through. So she'll spend perhaps maybe three months at the residential reentry center. And if there is um, no ruling on the appeal, or if we win the appeal, um, she is free to go on about her life. Okay, cool. Well, we wanted to certainly, I know a, her, a, she goes, she's a member of Friendship West Baptist Church. Remember, remember Dr. Freddie Haynes, or I, was, I was a member of that church as well. So he was texting me this morning, so that is great news as well. And so we're certainly going to keep covering this case uh, and certainly keep the attention on because, frankly, what they're doing to her makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, so, Kim, uh, keep, up, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. I certainly appreciate it. And I want to, I, I know I, I, I don't need to give a shout out, but I, it, I've got to make it clear that Albert Roberts, who opposed the Tarrant County DA in this past election, was very instrumental in um, getting this accomplished as well as the um, Arlington NAACP president, Alyssa Simmons. So. All right, then. We appreciate that. So great job, to Albert and NAACP. So Kim Cole, thanks a lot. Do it. Thank you, Roland. All right, now, now let's talk about Candace Owens. Now, y'all know no. I don't believe for a no. second she's the brightest bulb <laughs> in a dark room. She's the young sister who white conservatives have been just slobbering over because of her love for Donald Trump. And so Fox News puts her on on television all the time, and she's been running for me, y'all. And in fact, when they had their uh, their rally at the White House, uh, where Trump invited them all there when they had their conference here last year, first remember we were going to cover their conference, but then they revoked our press pass, and so we went anyway. And so outside, she's on the megaphone and she's doing interviews, and Vice is covering them and everything. And so she sees me and gives me this death stare, and like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "Well, baby, I cover black stuff," and it's ain't the first time I cover black conservatives at the White House, okay? And then she, she then she, um, y'all, the death stare was hilarious. Now, y'all, this, this is me. <laughs> That's how I was looking at her. And so, <clears throat> then poor little Candace tells me, oh, uh, I block you on Twitter because you call me a coon and a sal and an Uncle Tom. Now, any black conservative will tell you, I don't allow those phrases to be said on my show about them. I block people on social media who use those words. I've never called black conservatives sellouts, Uncle Toms, and Coons. And I told Candace and her little minions, where the proof? Right. I'm still waiting. So she been running from me. Her little boy, Charlie Kirk, been running from me. But y'all, they were in England trying to launch Turning Point USA in the UK. Mm. Char a question gets asked. Mm. Charlie, standing right next to Candace, hand her the microphone. Oh. Press play. I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. Um, so, in thinking about how we could go bad down the line, I don't really... I don't really have an issue with nationalism. I really don't. I think that it's okay. It's important to retain your, your country's identity and to make sure um, that what's happening here, which I think is incredibly worrisome in terms of the, just the, the decrease in the birth rate that we're seeing um, in the UK, is what you kind of want to avoid. So I'm not, I don't have anything problem. I have no problems with nationalism. It's globalism that I try to avoid. <laughs> Hold on, let me just take my jacket off. I'm going to have to... Okay, it's about to get a little heated up in here. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> I got to take my jacket off. It's about to get a little heated up in here. Oh, God. Um, so, y'all, let me break this thing down. <laughs> Crazy little girl just said, mm -hmm. well, if he just wanted to make Germany great, I'm good. Do y'all understand that Hitler was trying to exterminate all Jews in Germany. Mm -hmm. Hitler didn't want any non 
whites in Germany. Hitler took his cues from Jim Crow in America yes. to institute the hatred in Germany. Basically, what Candace said is, yo, if that's how you want to roll in Germany, I'm good. But the moment you decide to go outside of Germany, right, that's why we had a problem. Right, right. I told y'all that girl was not smart. Now she's trying to come back. Oh, Hitler, he's just coming to earth. Derek, I'm going to go ahead and start with you because, you know, you, you know, you are elite black conservatives. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go to y'all first. I mean, are y'all not black conservatives? Well, no, I hear you. Don't attach me to that. I, I just, I Derek, go right ahead. I look at Candace, man, and um, <laughs> I, I, her, like a lot of some of these young millennials, they use talking points. Right. They have no experience of what's really, really going on in the world. Ain't read a book. Ain't read a book. <laughs> Don't really know. And so she, she got handed the microphone, got asked that question, mm -hmm. and she stuck her foot in her mouth. Just because mm -hmm. she was talking. And she didn't even know what she was saying. Clearly she didn't know what she was saying. Right. And so, and that's that's my point. That's my problem with her, this new freshman Congress lady, Alexandra, mm -hmm. her, because I think that she's out too just, I mean, they give her too much no, 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 no. of a bull. Well, I don't agree with You can't even that. put them two in the same room. No, I'm just, this, I this, this, uh, this child I right here. finish my no. statement, please? Because Alexandra, she does not know what she's talking about yeah, either. Uh, 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 Derek, Derek, Derek. Okay. Derek, don't her. Except his ass whooping by itself. No. This is isolated. No. Malik, well, this is Malik, not, here's the deal. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> the right wing, the right wing has no. lifted this child up mm -hmm. like she is the next thing. All the stories done on her. NBC News did a story where Van Jones, and I, I almost cussed out Van, <laughs> said she literally could be the next Megan Kelly. Oh, and Jesus. all this sort of stuff, and I'm just going to be straight up. Okay. Y'all need to understand how to game recognize game. Right. Okay? Absolutely. And y'all, I've been, I've been known <laughs> black conservatives my entire life. And this is what white conservatives do. <laughs> you take for them, a telegenic black woman. Yes. Got a look. Who they say, oh, she got a look. Mm -hmm. And then for them, oh my God, she's so articulate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, hold up. She she gonna trash black people on the regular? Boom! Instant star. Mm -hmm. And Malik, that's what you got here. <sighs> All right, so it, that's not just a Republican thing, that's a political thing. Dems do it on the other side. You so, can't, so we got to be honest. Well, you can't actually show me how many Dems no. have okay. taken. No. No, no, I'm, ta I'm talking about, about the Hitler. I'm talking about somebody who's dumb. dumb. I'm talking about. I mean, I'm talking about somebody. We got a few. Oh no, him, Malik. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying. Stupid. I'm just saying. They ain't that quick to go. Or we gonna elevate you to superstar status? I, I don't think. Alexandria. No. So and so then here's the. Okay, dude, hold up. She, no, no, no. Different is, do the uh, first of all, she got uh, elected. Right. Right. This child ain't elected. She's appointed. She got appointed. Go ahead, Malik. So I, I agree with you on that. Here, but here's the real issue. There are some black folk that got appointed to positions that just simply weren't ready, and we just got to call a spade a spade. Okay. She's one of them. Mm -hmm. And and the challenge is those who are dis disenfranchised or feels disenchanted about the Democratic Party, and they make a switch or they have whatever conservative values. You present this platform. You get elevated. You have no idea how to handle that platform because they didn't prepare you. But let me also be clear. Talking. Let me also be good. Just go ahead and say it because y'all don't want to say it. Where, where are we going? I, let's just go ahead and say it. We're good. Stupid. It's been black conservatives like you mm -hmm. and black conservatives like you, Derek. Mm -hmm. And I can go Sher Michael. I can go Malik. I can go other black conservatives yes, yes. who they don't call. Yeah, but there's a but but why. they'll quickly. But that's there's, on there's too. a reason why. When Trump came to North Philly, I was in that room and sat with him. But I was willing to call him out on something in that room before he was president. There's a difference. Uh, Derek, I believe you're going to go in the room, you're going to call a spade a spade. Yeah. There are I, others that will play the role and go down the road. And, it, I, and that fame does not pan out. The sensationalism that a white conservative uses versus a black, the, the end result is totally different. Well, you know, the problem is, is that... <coughs> The problem is, is that she's stuck on stupid. She has not done any study, nope. any analysis. They told her, mm -hmm. since Trump said he's a nationalist, run with that. That you right, that you can't run. criticize nationalism. They told her that our line is we don't like globalism. 
And so Talking that's point. right. They're just, right. I mean, you know, you don't like globalism right. with a dude who has tried to open condos across the globe. Right. And she doesn't have good enough sense to know, because she knows nothing, because it's just empty, she doesn't even realize that she's standing on, you know, she's standing in Britain and <coughs> Germany. She doesn't even know the story of the Holocaust. I mean, she doesn't understand but, but it. The, Hold on, let me finish now. Man. I didn't interrupt you. You're right. Because, you know, she is... If she were diamond and silk, mm -hmm. we would all say, oh, well, you know, that's the minstrel show. Right. You know? Right. No, it is. You know? I it's the minstrel with show you. without the need for blackface. <laughs> without the that's need for blackface. Come on. You know? Okay. But, right. but, <laughs> but, what, but what we're seeing here <laughs> is somebody who they try to front as someone who's serious free thinker. Oh, yeah. Free and, thinker. And see, Malik, Malik, the issue here. I mean, the issue here for me again. Mm -hmm. This issue for me, and I, I look, <laughs> like I said, folks, I've known black conservatives for years. Mm -hmm. We've had black Republicans for eons. But the issue here is when white conservatives go, she's the one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they put on television, right. they put her on radio, <laughs> they elevate her, right. and she has no damn clue whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care how dumb you are. It ain't hard to say Hitler was evil. Absolutely. No. That's three words. I'm with, right. you, on, I'm with you on that. And, and what right. you don't do is talk about, you know, nationalism, and then you compare or, or cosign a mass murder. Right. right. I mean, that's, that's, that's just stupid, it, right? But, it, but you want to make Germany great? Okay, it, I'm good with that. Here, here's, here's a very it's dangerous... Like the borders. This is a very, very dangerous <laughs> element that's happening right now with black conservatives. Go ahead. Black conservatives... Unfortunately, those that are being pushed into that pipeline, they're using their social media influence yeah. to leverage this. That's a whole different ball game. And so there are some yep. people who are just saying wild things in order to get to draw the attention and try to push the, the talking point. Again, white conservatives can do that. Blacks, we get grinded up every time. And that was well, a I'm, dumb mistake. All I'm saying, y'all, is I can't wait to see now what the spin is. In fact, one of the people who they recruited in the UK mm -hmm. has already said, yo, these some crazy-ass people. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't deal with these crazy man. people. Uh, but again, Candace and Charlie, <laughs> I've offered y'all the opportunity to debate over oh, at least seven, eight months. Y'all are more now. Y'all did the show at three floors above us. Mm. So y'all been to the building. Mm. 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 I am more than willing for y'all to sit in these chairs right here <laughs> I, I'll get up, I, and have a conversation. Right here. Right here. Right. And you can't say, <laughs> ain't got nothing to you say. can't say, I ain't never had black conservatives on the show. That's true. I got two right now. That's true. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if y'all want to have a conversation, come on. But I'm telling y'all, go read a book mm. or two. Go try the ones where I know them got to read <laughs> before y'all come here. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's talk about federal judges. This week, the Republican-controlled Senate is racing to approve more than 40 Republican judges, mostly white men, uh, and some rated unqualified by the American Bar Association. Now, guys, when I say racing to do this, mm -hmm. literally no real hearings whatsoever. Whatsoever. Joining us is Fred McBride, Interim Director of Public Policy for Lawyers Committee on for Civil Rights Under Law. And basically, Fred... Mitch McConnell said, we're going to have a conveyor belt. Elections do have consequences. But the difference here is that they literally are trying to put people on the bench who are grossly unqualified. I mean, they passed a dude last year mm -hmm. who had never in his life filed a legal brief. Yeah. Yep. Had never, they had no ever clue. been in a courtroom. No clue. Last year, they put on the bench one woman who's only 11 years out of law school. She's like 35, and she had no idea about the law. One guy at a hearing hit him with a question. He said, well, we didn't really cover that in law school. <laughs> These are lifetime yeah. appointments to the federal bench. Correct. And it's been an, they've been moving expeditiously to push these through. Interestingly enough, though, these current 44 this week, these current ones, they don't want the embarrassment that came last year with some of those. So some of these have um, served and, and sat on a bench, but their, their views have been deemed 
extreme, um, outdated, just in the interest of fairness. I mean, you have a potential nominee who cannot answer a question about whether or not Brown versus Board of Education was was now, really now that's what's correct. stunning to me. Literally, and this is the second one they've asked that, mm -hmm. and they would not give an opinion. Not give an opinion on whether or not Brown versus Board of Education was rightfully adjudicated. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. And I'd like to emphasize this, Roland, because we pay so much attention to Supreme Court, like the Brett Kavanaugh last year. And it's like the Supreme Court. But what people don't realize, yes, the Supreme Court is the court of last resort, but the Supreme Court hears about 80 cases a year. So what about the cases that they decide not to hear? Right. They are decided at these district and circuit courts. We have to be concerned about that and fairness there as well, and not just wave a flag and, 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 and talk and become active when we hear about the next Supreme Court nominee. And, and we gotta care about these districts and circuit courts. And the people who are on this committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, of course it is, the, the new chair is Lindsey Graham. Mm -hmm. You have Ben Sass, mm. you've got Kennedy from Louisiana, mm -hmm. you've got Mike Lee from Utah, you got all these folks who talk about fairness mm -hmm. and equality, all those things, and they literally are running through, running through, wow. and they're being, they're being confirmed through our committee, 1210 votes, 1210 votes. I mean, they aren't even having the guts. Even when sorry ass Jeff Flake was there, okay, he was talking, every time he gave a speech, I'm like, dog, you on that committee said nothing. They literally are confirmed, and they always talk about, oh, so-and-so, the gold standard for the American Bar Association. Many of these judges are, have been deemed unqualified by the ABA. Mm -hmm. and, and be concerned, too, that the longstanding tradition of senators being able to oppose certain judges from their states is just basically being ignored now. Which is the blue slip. Right. And blue slip. so what Mitch McConnell has done, the, the rule in the Senate, folks, has been that um, that normally what happens is the senators from that state say, we'll sign off. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, when Obama was the president, uh, the two senators from North Carolina, Barr and Tillis, rejected two black women who he had pointed to the federal bench, refused to even give her, them a hearing, not even a hearing. McConnell is so dastardly in Wisconsin as a Republican senator, a Democratic senator. Both of them mm -hmm. submitted blue slips. He said, I'm going to ignore you. Mm -hmm. He even ignored the Republican blue slip. Their deal is, no, the Fairless Society wants these people. We're going to put them all on the bench. Uh, you wanted to say something, uh, I was going to yes. say, um, <clears throat> one of the things we talk about, I attend a weekly meeting, um, conservatives, and you're right. They have appointed more judges than any other administration. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, the part about the expeditiously, that's just moving forward now because they have been delayed. Because every week they come in and report what's going on in the House, what's going on in the Senate, and these judges have been delayed. So now this new thing, I think they're moving expeditiously because it has been blocked for so many. Yeah, but first of all, delayed for how long? They, they, I'd say for the last few months they've been coming and talking about how they've been delayed. So now they're definitely trying to no, push no, no, these no, things no, through. No, 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 They've been getting through. They've been getting through. They've been getting through. They've been but getting not through. just no, big no, 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 no. you're talking because, about right because, now. Right. Because, well, because what's been going on but they've been is that there's been negotiation mm -hmm. with Democrats right. because what, what, what Schumer has been saying is Schumer. we need proper hearings. Right. What they have done is to put on, and correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, they said, okay, we're going to put on 7 and 10 at one time. That's right. Exactly. And so as opposed to, I get to ask each person a question, no, I got to pick, right, right. okay, I got 10 people on, right. up at one time. And then and what they did was, to the point you're talking about, several of them were so embarrassing, they were like, okay, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and just submit their names and no, no, I mean, no hearings at all. Right. These, these, all these 44, did they all have actual hearings? Not all. Not all. A lot of it is sort of like a slate process. Right. Let, let's get it through. And, Just and run them through. Your point, and add to your point, remember we have a sitting president that says, I've appointed more. That's right. And he is actually reshaping the federal judiciary. Because, mm -hmm. because and the Republicans blocked 100 judicial appointments in Obama's last year, exactly. 18 months, because they were waiting to see if they will win the White House. And I was going to say, what concerns me the most about it, and I am a conservative, 
is that these guys, as you said, they are elected for life. Yes. They're going to be in that bench forever. And so it concerns me having a young black son because they're going to rule by the law of the land. And Malik, most of them don't even look like y'all. Listen, and wait. Uh, we, we talk about this all the time. These are, no, these are largely... Do, we do, the 70, all, we do this locally, 72 right? But, 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 hold on, hold on a second. Nom, over 72% of all of his nominees right. are white male. Absolutely. Right. Only 10% are minority, so you're looking at 90% white judges. But this Let's is, talk about one black. fairness. Wow. But this is and and the one black person one black. they were looking at was sixty seven years old <laughs> right. and they said uh, too old because right. they only want judges who are between thirty five and fifty. Believe this, and Barbara. This okay. is why elections matter and education and politics matters. We can no longer just vote with our gut, vote sure. down ballot and play these little games because we're now seeing the consequences right. of such. And, right. and let's ensure and that our is, vote is counted. I'm sorry. Yeah, Barbara, about, go ahead, Barbara, go ahead. This is about them stop being stupid. You know, I sat it with Clinton's people. Mm -hmm. I sat with Obama's people. I said your number one priority should be judges. Mm -hmm. Get it done, move it. Each... You know, Dems have not been smart when it's come to really moving aggressively on judges. And it is time for, and I think what I'm seeing is an awakening among the people where folks are finally beginning to realize my vote is tied to the judiciary, but the administrations that come in have to prioritize judges because all the vacancies that exist, I blame on the Obama administration in yeah. part. Because they could have done a better job. Well, well, no, 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 wait, wait, Barbara, wait, Barbara, wait, year one and two, Barbara, wait, year one, no, hold on, Barbara, wait. When you say do a better job, now let's just be clear. What Obama did is what Democrats do. They talk about you're gonna be fair. Right. Patrick Leahy was the chair of the committee. He said we'll continue the tradition of the blue slip. That's what he said. He said so. We'll have the process. I keep trying to tell y'all. Republicans don't give a damn about fairness. fairness. They whole deal is, yo, but that's not that sucker. But here's the results. thing. It's, it, Democrats have to stop playing flag football in the Super Bowl. Yes. Hey. No, I mean, literally what it is. Hey, I, look, my philosophy is, so my philosophy is when you... I like you, that. I've never heard my, that, but I like that. My philosophy is, <laughs> is when you get power, you, you use, use power. It. You use it. And my deal, I'm telling you right now, right. if I'm Chuck Schumer, Right. And I get control of the Senate. It's on. Let me tell y'all something. Right. <laughs> that sucker gonna look like the speed yeah. train in China. <laughs> <laughs> and every time yeah. Mitch That's McConnell <laughs> say something, I'll be like, show his ass the hand. Yeah. Cause you sat here and changed the rules. I'm telling you right now, mm. you think they ran through 40? I'll be like, 80. I'm telling you right, <laughs> right. now, right. I would. Right. I would I wouldn't apologize for Jack. But Democrats got to decide whether they want to play hard they or they're going to be soft. Right. Fred, okay. final comment, then we got to go. Yes, okay, uh, my final comment, I'm glad you mentioned voting. Yes. Because civil rights groups, we are concerned about fair, equal access to the voting, to the booth. Yes. And political participation. Yes. The, this current administration, mm -hmm. 30 circuit court judges. Mm -hmm. Yep. 53 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, 53 district court judges, mm -hmm. all of that, and some of those judges, some of those nominees, mm -hmm. supported the voter purge in Ohio. Yep. Right. Supported voter ID laws mm -hmm. in Texas and other places, and now That's they're going to be sitting in a higher court. That's right. And I believe still supporting those positions. Of course. Of course. Well, of course. All right, Fred McBride, we appreciate it, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, going to a break. We'll be back and roll Martin on the filter just a moment. Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. Shh. All right, folks, let's talk about our partner, D Herbs, okay? Uh, they, of course, uh, have this full body clean, so a lot of us looking to lose weight, uh, take some of the toxicity out of our body. Uh, it's one of the ways to do that is a full body cleanse. And so what they have are 27 different cleanses that you can actually pick from uh, on their website. Now, again, I did this a little bit earlier, lost about 18 pounds. And again, but it's not just a matter of just losing the weight, but it's also changing how you look at eating, what you eat, uh, more, more raw vegetables, more fruits, things along those lines uh, adding in your diet. Now, 
if you want to do if you want to do one of the cleanses, do me a favor. All you got to do uh, is go to theherbs.com, theherbs.com, and actually use the promo code Roland. You can also call uh, their number one eight six six four D herbs one eight six six four D herbs. Like I said, you know twenty seven full body cleanses to choose from. Some last three days, ten days, twenty days. They also have uh, weight loss management uh, cleanses as well. So again, go to their website, check it out, see what works best for you. I can tell you it was great for me. This is the third time I've actually done it, uh, and so we will have some other family members do it as well. So go to dherbs.com. A call one eight six six four D herbs one eight six six four D herbs and be sure to use the promo code Roland. So we certainly appreciate them supporting Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks. Today on the Tom Turner Morning Show, California Senator Kamala Harris, who is running for a president, uh, she was on the show talking about that. And here is our interview with the senator. It of course uh, is a great day. We are of course in the throes of a presidential campaign and one of the folks of course uh who announced on king day california senator uh kamala harris senator how you doing i am very well this morning Roland. how you doing first of all for all the black people out there let's just get straight is it kamala or kamala <laughs> it's kamala just thank you calm just think of calm. Well, I, I try to be most of the time. <laughs> I keep hearing folks throw all these different names out. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and be straight. Senator Kamala yeah. Harris. So, so first off, Very one of the things that, that we have seen since you announced so much attention on your record as a prosecutor, how are you uh, dealing with, going to deal with those issues where you have some folks who say that you are too tough on crime, that you were not uh, responsive to the needs of African Americans. Can you speak to the critics of your record as a prosecutor? Sure, absolutely. I mean, look, I, my parents met when they were active in the civil rights movement. I was born knowing the disparities, the flaws, and the injustices in the criminal justice system. And that's actually why I made a decision to be a prosecutor, because in my mind, we have to change and reform systems in all places and from all angles, including being in the room where the decisions are being made. And that's what I chose to do. And listen, Roland, let's be clear. I think we all know if a woman is raped, if a child is molested, if one human being kills another human being, we all want that there will be consequence and accountability. And we know that no parent should have to sit their son down and tell him when he turns 12 years old that he may be arrested or killed because of his race. So there is a whole lot of work to do, which is why when I was a prosecutor, I did initiatives that were groundbreaking initiatives, like Back on Track, which you and I have talked about over the years, where yep. I was one of the first DAs in the country to focus on young offenders and getting them jobs and counseling. And when I was doing this, there were DAs around the country saying to me, why are you, you're supposed to be locking people up, not letting them out. And I said, no, because that's not a smart approach. We need to get jobs. We need to get support for these young people, because if we want to be smart on crime, let's focus on prevention and not only reaction. So I stand by my record, but there are some people who are going to, you know, just say you shouldn't be a part of the system ever. And I don't know that I can ever appeal to that perspective. But I know in my heart and my soul and in the work that I've done that my objective has been about public safety and reform of the system. Senator Kamala Harris, do you have a black agenda for your campaign? And by that, I mean, I know that you are obviously a black woman and, and, and still mm -hmm. people are talking about that. Um, but also as a graduate of HBCU, you have an insight into this. But in terms of your plans, because, you know, we're talking about unemployment for African-Americans and education and things like that. And, and people want to know that they're being represented and thought of as uh, this campaign goes on. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I challenge all candidates to have a black agenda. Um, and, and so, you know, you mentioned, for example, HBCUs. I've, I've just been meeting over the last two days with all the HBCU presidents and chancellors um, talking about the work that we have done together and the work we have yet to do. I am a proud graduate of an HBCU, Howard University, and we know HBCUs. <laughs> you know, she and says the same. Th she says the same same thing to Hampton, <laughs> Hampton alum too. She says, "Hey, you." Know what? I have a, I have a, a senior member of my staff who went to Hampton. Bless her heart. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but but so the black agenda has to be about all issues, right? Because what we know is that when we are talking about our community, all issues impact our community, and the members of our community care about all issues. But let's start with HBCUs as an example. HBCUs present, produce 25% of all African-American STEM graduates, right? So that's in sciences, that's in technology, engineering, math. And so we've got to do the work of supporting our HBCUs, and that's the work I've actually been doing when I've been in the Senate as well around support in, in terms of federal dollars. Please. We've got to deal with the wealth gap. Black families yes. hold $5 of wealth as compared to $100 of our white counterparts. That's real. These disparities cannot be denied. Black home ownership, we're looking at 40% versus white home ownership, which is 73% of the population. So, again, disparities. When I was fighting the five big banks during the foreclosure crisis, I'm going to tell you, up and down my state of California, but across the country, black families were devastated because what we know is our biggest financial asset our biggest source of wealth, the thing that allows us to put our children to college and retire with dignity, is owning, buying and owning a home in which we take a great deal of pride. And so these are issues that I think about and work on. I have a proposal for how we need to change the tax system, and in particular around looking at families who make less than $100,000 a year and lifting those households up with a tax credit that they would receive of $6,000 a year, but they can collect it at $500 a month. Because what I know is that almost half the households who make less than $100,000 a year in this country are a $400 emergency away from devastation. Mm. And as it relates specifically to black households, this initiative would lift 60% of black households out of poverty. So those are some of the issues. We can talk about voting rights. Mm -hmm. We know when we look at Stacey Abrams, when we look at what happened in Florida with Andrew Gillum, we know we still have so much work to do because after 2013 and the devastation that the Supreme Court caused to the Voting Rights Act with Shelby V. Holder, we had 22 states at least that put in place discrimination laws that were discriminatory against black folks being able to vote. In fact, in North Carolina, the Court of Appeals said specifically, and, and I quote, that the law was created with surgical precision to prevent black folks or to deter black folks from voting. So that's another issue. And then, of course, there is the criminal justice issue and what we need to do around arrest rates, around incarceration rates, around what is happening in terms of the, 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 the killing of unarmed black men and women and what needs to happen around massive change and reform around a system of mass incarceration, a failed war on drugs. And, um, and I will tell you also, when I am elected president, I will change how this Department of Justice has been running recently, where they have shut down their pattern and practice investigations around bias and prejudice in police departments, and they have not been enforcing consent decrees. So I could go on and on, but there is an extensive agenda. And, and here's how I, I also think about it, just for the team. It, it, it's when we talk, we, we've got to also understand that black America's agenda needs to be America's agenda. And that's how I think about it. Okay, Senator Kamala Harris, you and Cory Booker are, are running for president, um, and I'm black, and I'm, I'm split. Who do I vote for? Who's... Really, Tom? <laughs> I vote for somebody black. <laughs> There's Cory well, Booker well, and Kamala well, Harris. Just, Are you splitting just, the black vote? Just don't, just don't vote twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not in Chicago. Hold up, then. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and will we have government after next Friday? Oh, I really do hope so. It's just outrageous how this man is playing politics because of his vanity project called a wall. Uh, I really do hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. She's running for president. Senator That's Kamala right. Harris. And it's pronounced Kamala. Uh, As in calm. Yes, <laughs> like, stay calm. Keep uh, up the great work, Senator. Thank calm. you so much. I appreciate you, everybody. Have a good day. You All too. Right, morning. All right, folks. Uh, so uh, let's do this here. Let's get y'all thoughts real quick. Mm -hmm. out, of, in, out of all the candidates running, you had a lot of black folks who've been a far more critical of Senator Kamala Harris than anybody else. What do you make of what you're seeing in terms of the criticism and critiques of Senator Harris? What do you think is behind it? 
we're hurt. There are expectations that were not met in our in our community with the last administration. People are they're not up for the same program again. And then you have candidates that are trying to ride on the same plane That's and same program that Obama's doing. That's not going to happen. So what we're seeing in the media is that clashing of folk going, well, I, I, look, correct, I, bring the right agenda. I, I said it for several years. Right. I said it. it can't, can't nobody sit here and say, oh, no, Daniels. No. I said several years ago that the next black candidate mm -hmm. will not get the same runway mm -hmm. that Obama received. No. Because, and again, black folks can't sit here. When I, and follow me here when I say black folks. And see, I love these people out here mm -hmm. who want to say, oh, it was black elites. No, 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 no. Right. I got the damn receipts. Right. 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 I can go down on my Facebook oh, page. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely. When a black, when a black, caucus, black caucus was demanding that $4 million in the House Financial Services Reform Bill, mm -hmm. black folks, regular, ordinary black people were saying, black caucus shouldn't be embarrassing the That's black right. president. Right. They shouldn't absolutely. be opposing right. them. They shouldn't be doing that. There are When black women <laughs> were sitting here, about Barbara, no. Black see, Barbara. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to let y'all know. There are when one. Obama, when he first appointed a woman, I was like, yo, he ain't even no black women. I'm telling y'all right now. You know that. They had a heated meeting at the White House. That's right. Yep. Okay? I need y'all to listen. I wrote a column saying should appoint a black woman. That's right. Anita Dunn jammed me up outside of the White House. Yep. You shouldn't have written that because that's going to make it harder to appoint another black woman. I was like, he ain't appointed one yet. Right. 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 Y'all, this actually happened. Never did. Mm -hmm. Barbara. You got banned from the Obama White House for two years. That's right. Because you dared to two call him out. Years. Go ahead. Banned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was banned for two solid years. I mean, not invited to anything. And even it got so bad that other civil rights leaders would get into the meetings and say, we can't talk about this because we need Barbara at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't. What are we doing? Why are we here? She's the expert. She's the leader. What are you doing? And they would not invite me. They were so angry with me because I said they should have nominated a black woman for the Supreme Court. I said, where are the black women cabinet members? I called this stuff out. <coughs> Just let y'all know. They were mad. And let y'all know. Look, mad. when he appointed Merrick Garland, <laughs> right. I was on the air like, hell no. Don't appoint mad. a white man. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the strategic thing is to appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court. I said it's going to play a role mm -hmm. in turnout in November. I said, all that sort of stuff like that. Right. And so what you're seeing here is you're seeing this pushback against her. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and here's the piece. And also, let me also be real clear. All these folks who act like it's new right. for a black agenda. Right. I've run three black newspapers. News editor of Black Webs and Black Magazine. Oh. Editor-in-chief of BlackAmerica.com. Worked for three black cable networks. Been talking a black agenda my whole damn career. I ain't new at this. Okay? <laughs> Some other folks are brand new at this. All right? So when you talk about uh, Mayor Maynard Jackson's agenda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about that mm -hmm. for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So take that bullshit somewhere else. Mm -hmm. or you think all of a sudden those questions have not been asked. And so, but every candidate, right. not just Senator Harris, right. I'm not just Senator Booker. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Bernie, it, he, he, I, keep I keep warning him. Yeah. He's going to get work, too. You better chill. We're talking about identity politics. Absolutely. He's crazy. And, but, but here's the thing. I keep how, warning him. How is it that the electorate, and we, we've got to challenge ourselves, how is it that we can curse out our favorite team for their non-performance, but we don't have issues or we, we, we have issues with stepping up and critiquing our, our political folks. And also for y'all black folks who all y'all comment on YouTube right now. Right. <laughs> if y'all only asking for a black agenda for the presidential candidate and you ain't say the damn thing and say anything about the, your black mayor mm -hmm. you or go. your black city council members or, or your county commissioners right. or your state reps or, or your state senators or your governors, don't, 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 don't come all of a sudden now. Cause you don't vote, don't don't cause come you vote now. Down ballot while your ward leader right. just gives you that little right. slip when you don't, walk. Don't, don't don't even don't, know your judges. Don't, don't all of a sudden start that, yeah. hollering black agenda. Absolutely. If vote. your ass ain't been voting for for district attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Down ballot. Don't be don't, don't be talking about don't yeah. be talking about criminal justice reform, and Senator Harris, 
if you ain't been checking the judges. That's right. Who mm -hmm. you been voting for in your own city? Mm -hmm. See, see, some of y'all don't want to have that conversation, but we gonna, but we gonna go ahead and move on. Well, I'm just letting y'all know. Well, some of y'all don't want to have it. Final comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I think that people, you know, people got to remember that a whole lot of black folks were pissed off with Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. because of her criminal justice agenda. That that kind of that kind of scar. Black people aren't going to be forgiving of a whole. There's a whole host of black. No, no, no. We'll see. Who, who's a, hold on. Because they say jack about Joe Biden. Uh, I, it, was, oh, it was his bill. I'm about to right. say. I'm about to say. And Joe Biden <laughs> will get his comeuppance also. <laughs> he got to deal with it. He's got to have the deal. Okay. All of them are going to have to deal with it. And a whole lot of people out there keep telling me, Roland, that they want to understand who the hell Cory Booker is. Well, here's because the you got to remember, a whole lot of black folks don't know who he is. But, but because again, he was in Newark. He was a mayor. Right. For every United States senator, yeah. at the end of the day, look, guys, understand. The first debate's not going to be Toronto until July or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be asking these candid questions. People are like, oh, Roland, why don't you ask Kamala this? Y'all, it was a seven-minute interview. Right. It was me, Tom, right. Simple, okay? <laughs> right. You ain't going to get more <laughs> than four damn questions right. in seven minutes. Right. If you're lucky. Okay? But I can tell you that every person running, we're going to make the effort to do, sit, do a sit-down one-on-one with them, and they choose not to sit down, but then we're going to tell y'all. But those questions are going to get asked. All right, we go to our next story. One of the men who beat black activist DeAndre Harris in Charlottesville in the summer of 2017 has been found guilty of the charge of malicious wounding. And now here's a video, y'all. All right, y'all, so the Washington Post had a story say, ex white supremacist. Well, when the hell he drop out? <laughs> ex white supremacist. <laughs> right, they when the hell he drop, when, when the hell he drop out? No, he's that. still a white supremacist. Absolutely. 50-year-old uh, Tyler Watkins Davis was allowed to go home to Florida to await sentencing. Ain't that some bullshit. Mm. Now, the former member of a white nationalist group, he's still white nationalist, mm. is the fourth man convicted in the beating. He could get 18 months to four years in prison. No bail, just sent home. See? They don't happen to black people. Mm -mm. See? No. See? <laughs> you don't See? Home. But See? that's Virginia. Yeah. All right, folks. Yeah. Uh, in Columbus, Ohio, Amber Evans yeah. is still missing. Evans yeah, is a community organizer who went missing more than a week ago. Her abandoned car has been found, but no sign of Amber Evans. This is the latest police missing yes. persons alert. Mm -hmm. Distraught, high-risk missing. CPD, that's Columbus Police Department, is searching for 28-year-old Amber Evans. She's a light-skinned black female. Her vehicle was discovered in the Scioto Mile area the evening of January 28th, 2019, after a dispute with her boyfriend, CPD's missing persons unit. The number is 614-645-4280 and J-B-R-A-M-M-E-R -M -M -E at Columbus Poll. Uh, that's his email, columbuspolice.org. Uh, and so we want to keep the pressure up. We got to find this young woman, y'all, uh, because his sister is an organizer and she has been missing. And so we can't allow her to be out there and she's still alive. Uh, we got to be able to find this sister. How long Our, she uh, she's been more, more than a week now. It's probably going about nine, nine days or so now. Yeah. Uh, and so we got to keep the pressure this up. This has happened to two yeah. of uh, our Absolutely. Kids. So, uh, folks, let's go to our uh, HBCU uh, school today. Mistakes are a fact of life. It is the response to the error that counts. Poet Nikki Giovanni. All right, folks, uh, HBCU uh, Giving Day, our school is Alabama State University. Founded in 1867, located in Montgomery, Alabama. Notable graduates include Ralph Abernathy, Tangi Miller, Ricky Smiley, Quentin Ross, and Lil Yachty. Now, y'all know, yes, Ricky Smiley, you can give, go to ALASU.edu, uh, ALASU.edu. And yeah, Ricky Smiley, y'all was here talking about Alabama and Roll Tide. No, his ass went to Alabama State. <laughs> so, Ricky, I'd appreciate it if you actually rep the actual school you went to and not. Uh, the other school you didn't go to just because of the University of Alabama. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Don't be trying to rep the school you didn't go to. Right. Wear your Alabama State letters. That's right. Because you see me wearing Texas A&M letters. 
I ain't wearing some other school stuff. That's all I'm saying, Ricky Smiley. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, y'all. Calling all HBCU alumni, students, and leaders. Enter the Ford Motor... Y'all, y'all want to change that? Thank you very much. Uh, enter the Ford Motor Company uh, HBCU Mobility Challenge and win 25 grand for your school. Mm. Building on their long-term support of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. The winning program will receive a grant of 25000 bucks to implement the proposal. The deadline, folks, is March 31st, 2019. Go to fgb.life, fgb.life, for more information and to apply. Ford goes further in our community, so we want to thank them for being a partner uh, of our show as well. Okay, we're going to close the show out with this here, y'all. So Matthew Whitaker, interim attorney general, was testified before Capitol Hill today. Uh, oh, he was whining, complaining. <laughs> and y'all want to see some whining? <laughs> Hit play. Um, Congresswoman. In the clock is... we restored? It, it, it was. I'm sorry, what was your. I, I don't know if your time's been restored or not. <laughs> uh, Mr. Attorney General, we're not joking here. I'm... And your humor is not acceptable. Now, you are here because we have a constitutional duty to ask questions, and the Congress has the right to establish government rules. The rules are that you are here. So I need to ask the question, and I need to have my time restored so that you can behave appropriately. I will behave appropriately as a member of the Judiciary Committee. Mm. Your ass got checked. Mm. What he said is, well, you know, uh, your your time's up. The whole Mm -hmm. time. Mm-hmm. He, even right. did, he even did it to the chairman, Jerry Knapp, right. Right. saying, well, you know, uh, you're five minutes up. He was acting up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he yeah. was acting up. That's pretty damn arrogant, Malik. Respectful. You don't, listen, don't go up against a black woman like that. <laughs> hey! Don't do that. Uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, I mean, listen. But, but here, again, there's an arrogance amongst certain folk that we're seeing, right? And so... I am fully okay with people getting checked. It's about time we have some contact on the field. This is this is a high contact sport. <laughs> I love all these sport analogies. It is what it is. But you know, and also it's just the disrespect. The Got disrespect. He, he was disrespectful for Nadler, but he was disrespectful to a black woman mm-hmm. in a humorous way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's all of this. It's like people wear black faces. All this right. denigrating <laughs> behavior. You know trying to put us in our places as they think we belong, mm-hmm. which is nowhere sitting as a congresswoman. Thank you, Sheila Jackson Lee. We love you, my sister. Keep on bringing it. Derek? <laughs> <laughs> I just... Derek? <laughs> Get your boy. Right, yeah. Get your boy. Mm. Right, no please. I didn't see it, Come so I, I, I need to see what happened. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, we're going to end the show this way. Baseball great Frank Robinson has died at the age of 33, a 14-time All-Star. Wow. He was named MVP in both the American and National League. Mm. A big-time slugger. He was the first black manager in Major League Baseball history, first for the Cleveland Indians and then with the San Francisco Giants. He had been in hospice care the last few months and was able to say goodbye to friends and family. Robinson was very active in the Civil Rights Movement and in 2005 was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George W. Bush. And so certainly our thoughts got all go out to Frank Robinson uh, and his family. And also this week, Hank Aaron celebrated his, I think his 85th birthday mm-hmm. uh, this mm-hmm. week as well. And so... Uh, we certainly want to say what's up uh, to all of our uh, all of our people. Yeah, Derek. President but... Trump tweeted out tweeted out that uh, Robinson was his man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. You get right. And, and, and I'm sure Donald Trump <laughs> and I'm sure Donald Trump <laughs> uh, th- think Frederick Douglass was by his bedside. Right. Right. <laughs> As he was reading the autobiography. Yeah, precisely. Right. right. He said that was his man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Just tell me what he said. Yeah, okay, Candace. <laughs> I just tell you what he said on the tweet. Yeah, okay. First of all, you know damn well he ain't seen that tweet out. He did. He didn't see that tweet out. No, he didn't. Somebody oh, you didn't say somebody else did it out. Just, just, like his, <laughs> just like his Black History Month tweet, you know he ain't sent it out. Right, 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 right. You know, okay. any tweet that's coherent. He ain't sent out. That was, that was All right, y'all. Yeah. All right, y'all. Look, we got to go now. I want to thank our pound, Derek, Barber, and Malik. Uh, thanks a bunch. Uh, be sure to support Roland Martin Unfiltered by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. I want y'all to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Yo, this is the only show like this. This is the only way we do it. And we keep it real, keep it black, keep it authentic. Uh, and so we want to speak to our issues, cover our concerns. So please join our uh, Bring the Funk fan club. 
I'm going to try to get my voice back uh, this weekend. Luckily, my coughing is subsiding. Uh, and do understand, y'all, I'm allergic to smoke. It normally takes anywhere from three to five weeks for all that to be out of the system. Uh, and so it's rough, but I could easily say I can't do the show this week, but uh, no, we got to uh, get through it. And so Monday, I'm going to be live from New York. Susan Taylor has a National Cares Mentory Project. We'll be there. And then, of course, the NBA All-Star Game is next week. And I'll be in Charlotte on Thursday and Friday as well. And so uh, for everybody, have an absolutely great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Holla.